Yeah, I'm a huge fan of espresso, especially if they make it right and that beautiful orange crema rises to the top. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. Oh hey guys, welcome back to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. You wouldn't know it, but uh, turns out Bach is actually a huge fan of coffee too. He told me all about it while I was setting up for this episode. And you wouldn't think, but just goes to show you really cannot judge a demi-human by his cover. You shouldn't judge anyone by their cover. Least of all demi-humans, because my children have been quite a surprise as well. Goon Squad, I like to call them. But welcome to our first episode in my new home. First episode that I've done out of this brand new office, which I showcased to you guys uh, a couple days ago. Wednesday, I believe it would have been. But um, I'm really excited to uh, I'm really excited to start this journey of content creation in this new space because uh, I, I worked really hard for this space. <laughs> And uh, I'm really happy to be in it, and it was a lot of work to get this stuff all set up, but ultimately I have to reflect and come to the realization that all of that hard work is essentially for you guys, because uh, I like creating content for you all, my viewers. I like you guys a lot. So, we left off here in the Altus Plateau, and I'm sorry by the way, you can probably hear in my commentary there's a lot of reverb, the, the acoustics in this room are trash, and... It feels weird to say that because I absolutely refused to live anywhere that had carpet. <laughs> but um, yeah, I opted for the hardwood floors. But as you can probably hear by listening to me, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a price with that. So the Altus Plateau in the last episode, I think we cleared that little camp over there. God, that I'm such an amateur. I probably should have watched the damn video. I probably should have looked at what I did last before firing this episode up and starting it. But it's too late. We're already recording. We're already using memory and space, precious resources. Give me that golden Roa. The only reason I grabbed that is because, is, as you can see, it populated on the screen, which means we haven't grabbed it yet. It's brand new material. I normally don't care about Roa fruit because my Estus flask is way better at healing Torrent than the Roa fruit, even though in a patch recently they actually boosted its healing effects. But I missed playing with this thing, I'll tell you that, even though it missed. This thing's great. Like, this thing does a lot of damage. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I want to find more opportunities to play around with it. And this guy with the bow is a dick. Like, he's really annoying. So what we're going to do is we're going to loot this. And we are going to... Here, let me do this. Do I have... Golden Vow. I do have Golden Vow. Good. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna crit his ass. Oh yeah! And get this little charge. Wow. The fact that he just like fell down right as I was charging, it almost looked like I beheaded him. <laughs> that was kind of wicked. Ooh, hello. We have another uh, another one of our spectral friends up here. Let's go pay him a visit real quick. We already grabbed the golden seed from that tree over there. I distinctly remember that. Yes, it is storming outside where I live. Interesting. So he's looking directly at the Erd tree. And uh, directly ahead is actually where the capital is, Lanedale Capital. But speaking of which, let's take a look at where we are. So, Bach is at this grace. We have Corin over here. We already talked to him. And then we have the Finger Reader Crone over here. And then up here on this broken section of bridge, like right there, should be the Golden Face. But I'm trying to figure out where I want to go first for this playthrough, I, mm, you know, I really want to go do this place. There's a poison village over here that uh, my friend Jeremy showed me. I completely missed it on my first playthrough that I did by myself, and he showed it to me, and we've gone through it a couple times together now, actually. It's pretty cool. I might start working my way towards there, 
because up here in this little bit, this little section right here is called the Windmill Village, and there's a Godskin Apostle boss over there, and I might I might go over there and get that Twin Blade, because the Twin Blade that the Godskin Apostle drops is really damn good. And I've been kind of playing around with Twin Blades and experimenting with them in this playthrough, and I want to... I want to continue that energy. Now, there shouldn't be anything we need to grab over here. I'm pretty sure we got all this stuff. Like, there was a... There was a maybe a chest. I don't see a single item, so that tells me that we kind of cleared this bit. So let's go ahead in the direction... Let's start fighting our way into the direction of, like, the Poison Place and, uh... The Windmill Village, the Golden Face. Without dying. There is danger afoot. Oh man, that looks so cool. Hold on, let me let me get out on the cliff here so I can get like a good look at this without Well I say without alerting these guys. I don't give a shit. They're gonna die. Weaklings. And we have already been inside that structure as well, to my knowledge. Okay, we have another tower down there. That tower is... That one's kind of a doozy. I really hate that one a lot. Um, <clears throat> I know where everything is for it, but... You know, actually, I, that's a Statue of America. I don't think we have been in there. We're going to have to go down in there. But, all right. This is a hell of a view right here. This is uh, Mount Gelmir. And then... Well, that's not. That's a separate thing. That is... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a hero grave below that place. Um, this larger, like, giant castle-looking thing behind that is Mount Gelmir. And then, or Volcano Manor, rather. And the, the entire, like, angry, spiky-looking structure is Mount Gelmir. And I think it's pretty cool. It's, uh... When I look at Mount Gelmir, it gives me, like, Lord of the Rings vibes, like Mount Doom. So here's what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to take a trip down here real quick. Only because it'll take just a second, and we can always warp back. Yep, we have not been in there, I don't think. And there's uh, there's a mini-boss that, in that invades in here. Well, he doesn't technically invade. He's not like an NPC. But he is not easy, and he might kill me because I'm feeling kind of rusty. All right, what do I have on me? My bow, okay. So let's, uh... Row, hit him! <laughs> and then I have rain of arrows on this, but probably don't have many opportunities to use Reign of Arrows yet. You jerk. There we go. Man, I'm telling you, bow combat on Torrent is wicked. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I like it. What's this? Okay, you got some butterflies. I knew I saw some kind of shiny in there. And... Uh, this part, the way I'm doing this, this is how I recommend you do this part. Like, scale around the outside first, and then uh, I recommend clearing the dogs before you ever try to set foot in there. Because once you're in there fighting this guy, he's going to take up like 100% of your attention. Because the dogs aren't like problematic. Like, as you can see, I'm just kind of picking them off with the bow. Like, it's pretty easy to kill them. But where the dogs become problematic is if you're trying to fight that guy in there and you're worrying about dogs at the same time, which these dogs cause scarlet rot, by the way, um, and bleed, but uh, you don't want them attacking you while you're trying to fight this guy because this guy is like... Blood Rose, nice. This guy is like surprisingly difficult in here. Or wait a minute, there's an NPC right there. Hold on a second, I might be confusing this building for something else. Okay, we are overdue for a sacred tear. Glad we got that. Okay. Eleanor, it seems I am no match for you. 
but I've learned a thing or two myself. You see, I've sliced the finger off. Please. Please, Eleonora. Yield to the cesspool no longer. Do not stain the immaculacy of your soul. Wow, those uh, would make interesting song lyrics. Is he going to give us the sword? Yep, the Nagakiba. That's a pretty badass sword. Here we go. So, you'll remember, he actually told us... Fuck off. Yes, it worked. Thank God. Bitch! No, 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 no. That does a lot of damage if you get hit by it. Gotcha. So, you remember that this guy that we just ran into actually told us... Oh, shit. No, no, don't you believe me. I'll fucking... He actually told us to run away, remember? He said if we run into this person, this alien, alien Nora, then we should not fight her. That's what he said. Yeah, you can keep... There we go. Now, she... If you don't have a way to just, like, murder her from far away like I did, she can be pretty annoying. And this twin blade that she drops scales with arcane, and this thing is busted, I'm telling you. So, when we look at the stats, it already has triple scaling right out of the gate. It's it's not like, it's not high scaling, but it's still triple scaling. It's an E in strength, a D in dexterity, and a D in arcane. And that scaling in arcane and dexterity, those both become a B if you max this out, I'm pretty sure. I think strength stays either an E or maybe it goes to a D, but you will move up like two whole letters in your main stats, arcane and dexterity, if you max this thing out. And you can get really high damage with it, but this thing has a low blood loss buildup at base. It only has 33 compared to like this, which has 45. This is 10 higher and this has 50. So it's bleed from a base is not very good, but it's got the blood blade dance on it, which is a lot of hits. It's a pretty wide sweep combo that hits quite a bit and it'll cause bleed buildup like crazy. And the other thing is this thing's light. Like it's even lighter than the base twin blade. It's only six units. It has split damage on it already. It has physical and fire damage and it causes bleed. This is a badass weapon. Twinned Naginata forged in the land of reeds. Chosen weapon of Eleonora, Violet Bloody Finger. Her master of the sword was such that her onslaught was likened to a whirlwind but now her legacy is stained by a curse of blood. So we don't learn like a ton about her. Only what you can get from like, you know, the guy that just died in front of us because he told us about her a little bit ago. But let me see if I can. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, it hits quite a bit. And, and it's got like got your lightning fast twin blade moveset too it's it's pretty good it's a good weapon um let's see should i keep using this i may as well all right at least we got another sacred tier i'm happy about that and then tell you what i don't think this will change if we quit out i'm pretty sure we would need to rest at a grace in order to get his corpse to disappear and make this part reload but That guy, um, you should be able to find him in a different place. I think we just ended his quest early by mistake. Okay, let me go grab this last item and we're going to get moving again. Human bone shards, thank you, because we can use those, if you recall, to do the throwable item that chases enemies. It's like a, like, you can make like a wraith throwable and it did quite a bit of damage. Like, we tested it out on Margit, actually. Yee, giants. 
giants, giants, everything you could ever want. What is that? Oh, looks like some kind of pillar. Okay. There's a spirit spring. All right. Where did the wolves go? Okay, there's one. You. Sorry. I want this item. Even though I'm not even going to use it. Gosh, now I feel bad. Okay, so I don't... I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I don't want to run towards Mount Gelmir. That's not my... What do you want, man? I tell you. What makes me feel bad for killing them is... You know, wolves... They don't attack you out of stupidity. Like, it's not that... It wasn't foolishness that made that wolf take me on after he watched me one-shot his comrade. It, it's not that. It was... I don't know. Willpower. Bravery. Self-sacrifice for one's pack. All things that are respectable. Things that do make me feel bad for killing them, but... I don't know. I also love the anime Wolf's Reign. Like, I grew up watching that. I've rewatched it a thousand times, and I fucking cry every time the end happens. I'm not going to ruin it for anybody that wants to see it. I hate finishing that anime. I hate it. It ruins me. All right. So let's do this. Let's make our way. Hello. Huh. Those are just flowers. For some reason, they, the way the camera looked, I thought those purple flowers, like I thought the rock was glowing purple, like a meteor or something. <laughs> it like caught my attention. And then I, as a result of that, I probably scared the shit out of that little guy. He was probably like, oh my God, he's looking right at me. <laughs> what do I do? You're safe for now, you little Australian rabbit thing. What the fuck are those things called? Like, does, has anybody, like, looked at the actual beastery for this game and, like, discovered the name for those little rabbit mouse things that run around? Hello, gentlemen. Oops. There we go. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, man, that's pretty. So... If you're wondering why it's called the Windmill Village, right? Like, can you tell yet? So this village that we're going to come up onto is actually super reminiscent of Bloodborne. It's almost exactly like the crazed village with all the women before the Witch of Hemwick. I think that's what it's called. I need to replay Bloodborne bad. That's like the only game... It's the only Souls game on my channel that I have not done a Return to series for. And like, I really want to play it again, but... I've actually disclosed this a few times because people tend to ask. Um, the big reason that I have not actually redone a Bloodborne playthrough is because the way I determine whether or not I do a Return To series for a Souls game on my channel is actually a very simple criteria. <laughs> um, what determines if I do a Return To series is entirely dependent on the quality of my walkthrough for that game. So. I did return to the dark first because obviously Dark Souls is like my oldest walkthrough and it's my shittiest one, naturally. Thank you for that. We can make like the best holy throwing item now and it's very, very good. It'll do a ton of damage, but um, yes, did return to the dark because Dark Souls is my worst walkthrough. It's my first one. And then I did... Uh, I did uh, Return to Boletaria for Demon Souls, because that was my second walkthrough, I think. I started Return to Granzis with Dragon's Dogma, but like I think at the time of starting that walkthrough is when things really started to tank and go downhill for me. And then, what else have I done a return to? I don't know. I've tried... Tried doing a return to a series for almost everything. But Dark Souls 3 is probably going to be the next one. I'm going to redo my walkthrough for that game. But I want to do a return to Bloodborne series. I want to do like a like a return to the hunt type thing. I think that's what I'm going to call it. Um, that's a long way off though. Because we're going to have to do... 
what I'm going to do next is I've already actually explained this in my previous video. I think I said at the very end. So for anybody who didn't make it to the end of the last video and you want to know what my future channel plans are, listen closely. We're going to finish Elden Ring. I'm going to finish the current walkthrough for Demon Souls. And then after that, the things that are going to replace these two games is going to be Dragon's Dogma, because we're going to do a proper Return to Granza series to celebrate the announcement of Dragon's Dogma 2. And then I'm also going to redo my Dark Souls 3 expert walkthrough. So it's going to be Dark Souls 3 and Dragon's Dogma after Elden Ring and Demon Souls. Get excited for that. You, please, you think... Oh boy. East, ruins of gold. To the west, the serpent's sacrilege. Wherever the path leads, so shall you follow. Wherever the path leads, only more sorrow. Is a curse, a curse, the curse of Queen Marika. <laughs> good opportunity to mark on our map let's see we'll do i think diamonds yeah diamonds is how we mark teleporters good shit so let's rest at this grace and then we will talk to our friend here our traveling merchant whom i am an advocate for i think the merchants are great oh dear you might i terribly sorry uh are you here as a customer? Maybe. What do you got? Crossed tree, great shield. This thing's pretty cool. It looks awesome. <laughs> I like the way it looks. An iron great shield, large enough to cover the entire body. Emblazoned with an old interleaving tree. Okay, so that's an interesting vocabulary there. Interleaving tree. So I guess it's uh it would go to describe the the pattern of the leaves they are interleaving great shields boast high damage negation and guard capacity making enemy attacks easy to repel well not if you're me okay so this thing this is good the scorpion kite shield it is uh it's pretty good for poison a standard medium-sized metal shield highly reputed for its solid build and reliability emblazoned with the yellow scorpion a warning of surprise attacks and sudden strikes i'm Pretty sure what this thing's special ability is, though, that it doesn't tell you in the description. I'm pretty sure it's it's good against poison. And then this red crest heater shield is like, what is this one? Fire is its best. Okay. Symbolizes red wings. And then this, the ancient dragon apostle cookbook, lightning pot, roped lightning pot. Yes, please. And I'm in no hurry to level up, so I'm okay with spending money on this stuff. What is this? The tree surcoat. All right. Maybe we can... Might wear this. Play around with it a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this. Okay. The Unseen Assassins. We are definitely going to look at that. And then Imp Shades. Oh, I'm afraid I've very little to offer. Oh, that's okay, man. I cleaned you out. So let's look at what we got. I don't think these are ever in order, so we really have to look for them. Okay, here we go. Imp Shades. Nothing can touch the shades of imps in the hero's graveyard. Only Rose's Light can give them form. So the explanation behind this note is that once we get to that hero's grave, it's actually the one I pointed out that's in front of Mount Gelmir. Um, that hero grave, there are these weird, like, spotlights and you can't actually beat the enemies in that place unless you get them into the spotlight and it's really annoying because their leashing or the way their ai is set up is they don't want to go into the light they'll start running back to their post if you get them to follow you into the spotlight and it's super annoying i'll show you when we get there 
An unseen assassins? Some assassins cannot be seen with the naked eye. Seems the Erd Tree sentries once carried torches that could cast light on these prowlers. It's interesting to pick up this note here at this point in the game because we... We're not going to get that torch until way later when we get into the Forbidden Lands, like the snow biome. So, yeah, that torch is in one of the first two or three, like, caves that you do in that level, I'm pretty sure. All right. Let's see where this teleporter goes, because we know we can just come straight back. Oh, it took me straight to the Windmill Village, and there's the Golden Face. All right. Do not tell me that that's Corrin. Corrin is not dead in front of him, is he? Because my goal is to try to get them reunited. Hmm. He's just looking at the Erd Tree. And he doesn't say anything. Dragon Moon Grease, that'll be useful once we go to the... Oh, what's it called? Crumbling Faramazula. God, why haven't I been riding Torrent this whole episode? Like, I feel like I'm running around on foot. It's like I'm still in Demon Souls mode. All right. Let me... I see you, Pooch. There he is. That's what I was looking for. This is uh, <laughs> kind of dirty. There's a uh, there's a battle mage Hughes that just kind of sits on this shelf here. That shelf, this cliff here. And he does a lot of damage. Think he gives me the battle mage set? Yep, there it is. Sweet. I can't wait until I get his spirit ash though, because he's like, I am still pretty convinced. As much as I like my children, I still think that he is the best spirit summon in the game, which is why I call him my bodyguard. Oh my god, I didn't even need the third one. Oh, I did. Wow, because he had like negative five health. That's interesting. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. There. We can one-shot those ones. All right. So we got a shack up here, it looks like. Okay. West Windmill Pasture. I wonder if we can beat the dragonflies with this halo. Oh, <laughs> what do you know? Then we can drop down on the tombstones, should we so please. But we're not. Alright, let me do this. I want to switch to... This. I really like this weapon a lot. Alright. You. Come here. I like how fast you can shoot with this thing, man. It's great. 170, oh shit. 170 versus what is the question. Oops. Oh shit! <laughs> Here I am trying to play around and see what works. Got an arrow sticking out of you, pal. Yeah! Oh my god, I missed. Get out of here. I didn't even see where they were hiding. Where were they? Were they over in this bush? That's dirty. Alright. And let's drink. I really like that ability. I think it's great. <laughs> Burn. Oh, 
You didn't drop anything? That's fine. Sneaky. Didn't work though. He still heard me. Alright, giant rat ashes. I forgot about that item. It's actually a pretty good spirit summon, so there's uh Let's take a look. I'm pretty sure there's a unique property with these. Summons three giant rat spirits. Um okay, Ashen remains of spirits at twelve. Spirits that do not require FP to summon. Yeah, that's it. They don't need any FP. The rat spirits appear at a distance from the summer, swarming upon their victims to start the fight. Even as spirits, these vermin seem to multiply endlessly, enhancing these ashes can increase their numbers. That's it. Yeah, that's right. So it costs no FP, but it does follow the same rules as other spirit ashes. You can only summon them once, and once they're gone, they're gone. You can't keep using them over and over again. But, yeah, they don't need any FP. And the other thing is, if you keep upgrading them, it increases the amount of them that spawn. I think that's pretty damn cool. Okay. And, bruh. the fuck out of here you rat bastard <laughs> I couldn't resist the opportunity okay tarnished gold sunflower no I want the good one man I want the regular version I want the golden sunflower that way I can make those I can make those holy pots that like one shot death bird <laughs> okay what's going on over here there's a there's a crab in here somewhere, I bet. Okay, you... Get rid of that guy. Got a couple more, it looks like. We two-shot these guys, though. That's pretty awesome. And their infinite poise doesn't seem to work against the Naginata either. I mainly just wanted those butterflies. There's seriously no crab in here or anything? Huh. Just an unassuming body of water. Okay, works for me. Okay, it's time to enter Hemwick Charnel Lane 2.0. Um, if we keep going in that way, like going up the hill, it'll take us towards the, uh, towards the Godskin Apostle. So I'm actually going to clear this group first. I don't want to experiment. So, these guys, I don't think they're hostile. Like, they won't fuck with you if you don't attack them, which is strange. These guys, though, are hostile. So, what I'm going to do is that. Ooh! And they're inevitably going to blow up and hurt the witches. No? Wow. That's surprising. Normally they blow up and it hurts the witches, but... I keep calling them witches, but they're not. They're just women. There we go. The Traveling Garb and the Twinned Knight Swords. There we go. So that's one Twin Blade that we're going to get here. There's a second one that I really want. The, the Godskin one. It's called the Godskin Peeler, I believe. So I'm not going to murder these women just yet. Let's kind of explore the cliffside here, see what's going on. Oh yeah, check that out, man. Mm. You see that giant skull up there? Yeah, this here is very interesting. This is our first peek at the Forbidden Lands. So this is uh, this is the snow biome. And we're not going to get there for quite some time. We still have we still have a ways to go before we get up there with the fire giant and all that. I'm looking forward to that part too. As difficult as an of an area as that is, I'm definitely definitely excited about it. So let's see if the crucible does get damage to these women. Okay, yeah, it does get damage. Damn it, I missed. Now their eyes are glowing red. They're pissed off, man. They want to kill me. I missed. Ye 
Yeah. No. This thing is way too fast for you guys. Are you kidding me? Not in a million years. Ooh, human bone shark. I did not know they dropped that. Okay. Now, once the eyes glow red and they start going nuts and trying to kill you, you do definitely need to be mindful. Because I haven't died to them yet in this game, but, I mean, just based on their behavior and, like, how erratic they get, I'm, like, a thousand percent certain that you can probably get shit on really quick. Yes. Trying to walk onto the dog. Oh, come here. There we go. I knew he was only going to last one hit. Alright, so we got... We got a couple misbegotten here that are going to be a problem that we need to do something about. So let's... Let's get rid of these guys. And then this guy, um, Lightning Spearum. It's not gonna hit. Oh my god, it hit him. That's awesome. So this is my best bet for this guy. They really don't like the Black Flame. And just finish him. I don't think I've gotten their axe yet. It's really good. We'll lure him with this. Oh, yeah. Finish you off. Okay, got my flask back. I'm happy about that. We got some fruit. Now, these guys are, like, pretty sure they're not even hostile. I'm pretty sure they just mind their own business, but, like... Come here. You... Listen, dog. There we go. Yeah, you're not going to put that fire out. You're dead. <laughs> Raw meat dumplings. We got ten of them. Okay, we can see the windmill that we just cleared off in that direction. We're making our way up further towards these other windmills. This is a cool area. I mean, it's. I will say one thing that kind of bothers me about this game is I... And it's not necessarily the game's fault either. It's not something that the game did wrong. It's just something that bothers me about playing Elden Ring is I don't like that there are a lot of really cool and memorable areas in this game that you can only run through one time. So, for example... I really like Volcano Manor a lot. It's one of my favorite levels to clear in this game. And I'm going to be really sad when it's over. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to hit this next grace up here. And there's a minor Erd Tree down there that has a not Erd Tree Avatar boss. Like there's, so here, I'll just show you. There's... This entire section, like, when you get down to the lowest level of the Altus Plateau, like, down where those trees are, there's, like, it gets foggy and sort of freaky, and there are these things that spit worms at you and cause death blight. It's, it's bad. It's all bad. That's my least favorite part of clearing the Altus Plateau. But we're going to have to do it, but I'm just saying I won't like it. I kind of want to see if I can grab this without alerting them. Nope. Damn. There they go. <laughs> Intruder alert. Re. <laughs> well, unfortunately for them, this Naginata 
does not mess around. And they're not able to get through our Night Shield either. Well, I call it the Night Shield. It's, uh... I told you I'm in Demon Souls mode. This is, uh, the Banished Night Shield. It's really good. Poison Grease. Okay. That I probably will end up using. We'll make use of that at some point. Mushrooms. I know there's more stuff around here. I'm no fool. There's goodies. Oh, hey! <laughs> Look at you. I wonder what that guy's got. It's probably something real good. So we're going to have to make sure we don't scare him away. Oh, is there just like one out here patrolling? All by their lonesome? Oops. Where are you going? Have a surprising amount of health. Okay. So let's go get let's go get that little guy over there before we go climbing further up the windmill trail. Okay, I'm not worried about those guys. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to take this guy out in style. All right, you. Don't you go anywhere. Huh? Well, that didn't go any way close to how I wanted to plan it, but <laughs> we still got him. Um, that miracle, oh my god, and that's the, the place I was just talking about. That's the fucking ravine of death that has all the bullshit. It's got slugs, it's got death blight, it's got everything in your worst nightmares you'll find in there. Okay, would much rather deal with windmill psychopaths if I have a choice. Is there an item? No. Okay. Just a glowing skull. All right. Let's take a look at that miracle that we got. Okay. The protection of the Erd Tree increases affinity damage negation for self and allies. So it's for all affinities, it looks like, except for physical. So your magic, your fire, your lightning, all your elemental defenses go up substantially when you cast that. And I mean a lot. Like, if you... I'm, say, I'm saying this from experience, by the way. I'm not saying this just... This isn't me pulling information out of my ass. I don't do that. The, uh, the reason I say substantially is because I have run into that shit in PvP quite a few times. People cast that in PvP, and you have a group of three that are already pretty tanky with a lot of health. And they cast that your damage goes down even more. Like, one of my PvP builds that I have is entirely, like, holy damage. Like, that's where all my damage comes from, is holy damage. And when people cast that spell, I really hate that it counts for everybody, like, allies and everything. I really hate that, because... It causes me a lot of trouble. <laughs> Their defense goes up so absurdly that, like, if my base physical damage on my weapon isn't high enough, I essentially will do not enough damage to kill them fast enough. So it's like, when people cast that, and especially if you're fighting more than one person, which is like, don't get me wrong, that's like the funnest part of PvP in this game, is running into groups of people and just shredding them. Like, that's like the best part. But... The problem is, you run into a group of people who cast the Erd Tree Protection, and uh, if your primary source of damage in your AR is, like, split damage, like if you rely on holy damage or whatever it is, I just went in a giant circle, um, it can cause some issues, it can make your damage suffer tremendously, because that spell, not spell, that incantation 
adds a ton of absorption. Okay, I'm going to rest here because I'm not worried about anything respawning behind me. Hello, you. Festive melody? Don't skin me. Oh man, there's skinning afoot, which makes sense because I mean we're about to we're about to get a weapon called the Godskin Peeler. Alright, come here you. All of you at the same time, that's fine with me. So the Holy is quite effective against these women. We're still one-shotting them with our weapon ability. And... I'm going to go to the War Spear, because y'all know how I feel about this thing. This is like... This is like my weapon in this playthrough. It's so damn good. Okay, so we can climb up these rocks and kind of sneak around if we want to, but I'm just going to go straight up through, because I'm not scared of these bitches, like... Let's get them. Without missing anything. <laughs> Surely you understand. Okay, up there. I'm pretty sure there's going to be like an item up there that we don't want to miss. Oh, of course. Come on. Alright, time to go to work. Yeah! Come on! <laughs> uh. Man, she roll caught me. That was embarrassing. Oh, this weapon's so good. Ooh, the festive garb. So there's the, the festive song, and now we have the festive garb. So it sounds like these women are surely a component to the festivity. Oh, there we go. I knew there was something hidden in here. Yeah, payday. Dogs. There's always dogs in here. Okay, not this time. Good. So now we're going to use Torrent. We're going to jump around a little bit so we don't miss anything. Because there's stuff for sure that you can miss here. Come on. All right, if we get up here, no, I'm not going to jump to that. There's no point. Um, Let's see. There is one item off to the side here. Here we go. A rune arc. Fantastic. And then how about here? No? Okay. I mean, that's okay, but... Strange. Okay. There are more over here, I think. Yep. Nope. I didn't roll too early that time. Fuck you. Damn, I'm getting these bone shards, man. I'm okay with it because I can make throwing items with them. Hello. That's easy to miss. Let's go grab this. That's purple, too. That means it's going to be something good. Let's see what we got. Hell yeah, the Celebrant Skull. I remember this thing. I picked this up on my first playthrough. This is, uh, this is an intelligence weapon, I think. 
No? Strength and dexterity. That's it. Okay. Got barbaric roar. And it is just a regular hammer weapon. Large bludgeon decorated with flowers and many colored fabrics. Ceremonial tool used by dancers during the festivities of Dominula Windmill Village. The striking end is a skull too large in size to be human. Grants trace amounts of runes on landing hits. Okay, so it's a rune farming weapon. That's pretty cool. Probably don't get very much, but... I mean, if you're a hands-on kind of person, and you prefer to smash things to pieces every time you get into a skirmish in this game, I bet it probably adds up. You know, I'm curious. I want to see how much it gives you. I'm... I gotta see. I wonder if you specifically have to hit enemies, or... Can you hit, like this, for example, like a dog? Here we go. Twenty? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so you get twenty per hit, all right? Does it change? Based on who you're hitting? Well, it doesn't look like it. it. looks like flat 20 per hit. Holy proof dried liver. We have not picked that up yet. All right, so there you go. There's your experimentation. 20 per hit. I would imagine that would for sure add up <laughs> over a long period of time. You better believe it. Okay, back to murder. This is a trap. Maybe it's not. I know there's one section where if you go in for the obvious mob, there's severe backlash. Okay, there we go. No, get out of here with your little thin beast bones, your little twig legs. Good for nothing. Mushrooms, always pick up mushrooms. Let's see what we got here. Oh, hello. Man, getting these human bone shards, I'm happy about it. Let's see, is there anything hidden up here? Nope. Alright, there's that item all the way over there. We for sure want to go get that. We can go get that first before, and then there's also one up there. Okay. Alright. Should be able to get to it just by following this. There we go. Stormhawk feathers. Alright. So we can make storm arrows if we want. Those can be quite useful. They're good for knocking enemies off of uh, ledges and stuff. I wonder if... I wonder if that's a deliberate thing. I wonder if they did that on purpose. Like, did they... Did they give us a Stormhawk Arrows from on, at this part for a reason? Like, is there a, is there a way that we can use that item to, uh, to our advantage? Where are you? Hi. Okay. I doubt it. I'm probably reading too far into it, but it's, it's interesting to think about. Okay, God's Gun Apostle is going to be right up here. I don't want to aggro him before murdering all of these impudents. And we're one-shotting them too. Hell yeah. Oh, hi. I'll take all the bone shards, please. 
What's this? Oh, golden room. Where are you? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Now, you. This would have been an interesting place to hide, like a ladder or something, you know? See who's really paying attention as they scale through the level. Exalted flesh, hell yeah, we can make more. Well, actually, we don't have to make it at all. That's like the actual consumable item, is the strunk meat. Big fan of that. Okay, so there's our stake of America. I don't want to fight the Godskin Apostle. I want to go over here first. Get out of my way. All right. He didn't aggro on me, did he? There he is, okay. Let's see, before I fight him, let me actually clear this place out real quick. Man, the ones with a hammer I feel like have more health. Okay, fireflies. And I should be able to summon my children against this guy, so... Let's definitely do that. They haven't seen any action for a minute, so let's let's let them out. <laughs> and I'm also going to switch back to this guy because God's gonna apostle is very dangerous. Here we go. Yep, he's dangerous. Get him, kids. Oh, shit. Oh, there he goes. Shit. Ugh! Drink! Alright, kids. Make Daddy proud. Get his ass. Damn it. Get his ass. Come on. That's it. Get him, Biff. <laughs> This thing's good, man. This thing's really good. There it is. The Godskin Peeler and then the Scouring Black Flame. We're going to equip that pretty soon because the Scouring Black Flame actually does quite a bit of damage, especially if you can hit them. It's got like a shotgun effect on it. It's good, I'm telling you. So let's... Let's clear the rest of this area. Let's check around these towers, do our due diligence. We are professionals. I'm not seeing anything. Okay. So to end this episode, what we'll do is we will take a look at the Godskin Peeler and see if it's gonna be something that we want to use on our character. I don't see why not because it's perfect for our stats. Can't get up there, I don't think. All right. So let's take a look, shall we? This thing. We did pick up this as well, the Twin Knight. This is a Strength Twin Blade. This is a Dexterity one. And it's got Black Flame Tornado on it. 
it's really cool. It's got that hook. This is literally his weapon. This is what he uses. Unique twin blade wielded by Godskin Apostles, characterized by its disturbing design. One end features a sickle for slicing attacks, while the other boasts a winding spike for boring into flesh. Much skill is required to wield this weapon due to its asymmetric nature. This thing is cool. It's got your regular twin blade moveset. But the strong attack is awesome. Ends with a thrust. Check this out. You can charge this up. Bam! It's good, it's good, I'm telling you. I like it. It's a cool weapon. So let's rest at this grace. Okay, flasks. Oh wow, they added a little dot. That's so cool. They added a feature that makes it visibly like tell you, hey, you have an upgrade. It reminded me to use my tier. Okay. Now we need five of those. We got probably a minute for that. How many do we have? Uh, one. Yeah, we need like four more. Okay. Yeah, I really like this. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, we're going to use this bitch. This thing is awesome. <laughs> it's heavy, though. It's like a heavier twin blade. It weighs eight units. Man, that's cool. It probably needs... What do you call it? Um, stick with this guy for now. It probably needs... Um, somber smithing stones to upgrade which is fine because we have plenty but okay what the hell why not we may as well just go back to the round table old and see if we can upgrade it okay you of course i am oh she has a dialogue okay can't upgrade the minions most unfortunate. Okay, how about Ludo we could upgrade? Who else was I even using? I don't want to use the Mimic tier. I don't like that thing. Who else do we have? Like our Gremlins? Yeah, man. Okay, so we can do we can do these guys, the Fanged Imps. I like them. I think they're cool. We can upgrade Ludo, but why would we? All right. So okay. To Let's actually talk to her. Something. A little while ago, someone started lurking in the wing on the opposite side of the round table. And I can hear, from all the way over there, the howling and wailing of spirits in fear of a curse. I can even hear the repulsive twisted malice in itself. A plethora of spirits in an unceasing cacophony. I can't even imagine. How much suffering inflicted to who knows how many souls. Not even the crafting caused anything like this to happen. You should keep your distance. I know you're strong, but please. Okay. She's talking about the loathsome dung eater. Well, I took you no matter it's out your arms. I was moving, man. I was trying to get my stuff together. All right. Uh, oh, wow. Ooh. It only needs regular. Okay. I wonder if it means it can be infused. <laughs> Let's find out. I doubt it. What? It has a unique one on it already, though. That's interesting. Okay. Son of a bitch. All right. So, wow. If we can... <laughs> <laughs> if we can just buy the shit to upgrade it, that's good because I have plenty of bell bearings to do that. I can just buy all the materials to upgrade it. Okay, great. Well, that's going to do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for continuing to join me on Elden Ring. Um, thanks for toughing out another hour-long episode with me in the lands between as I figure out... Uh, figure out this new space of mine and get used to, to recording in this new environment. It's It's been a journey, but I'm happy about it. I like my space a lot. I'm, I'm happy. I feel good about it. And uh, I'm happy to be uploading for you guys again. I'm really glad that I'm all packed up. Our 
got packed up god no i'm glad i'm all unpacked and i'm glad my desk is all set up i'm glad i'm able to make content again because this is my happy space i like it so thank you for joining me on the end of the playthrough of elden ring i've been your faithful host let's play dark souls hd and i'll catch you guys in the next video